Tori here from McKinnabilt. We're going to do a three-part video series on how to build stairs. Part one is going to be how to calculate the stairs. That's how to do the math to figure out your rise and run to get from uh, the bottom of your stair stringer to the top of your stair stringer. Part two of the video series is going to take the knowledge that we've taken from, from uh, part one, as in how to calculate it. We're going to add to that some uh, instruction on the tools that you'll need and how to use them to lay out your stringer and then cut the stringer and then finally to make the adjustments to that stringer to account for the particular materials that you're using in your application. Part three in the series will be where we take our stringers, we put them together with the other pieces necessary to make our assembly and actually install them in the house. Now let's start with uh, a basic set of calculations to figure out how we're going to construct our stringer. I'm going to start with a hypothetical situation. In any case, with the set of stairs, we're figuring out a total, total rise from where we're trying to get to up to the level that we're trying to reach. And that's going to be our total rise. In this example, we're going to have a total rise of 109 and 3 quarters inches, or for our calculator, 109.75 inches. So how do, we, how do we take this information and come up with a stringer uh, dimensions? The standard that we like to use in residential is 7 inches of rise over 10 inches of run. The reason we do that is that commercial code is a maximum of 7 inches on a rise, so we like to stay close to that. Uh, believe it or not, your, your body gets used to walking up a certain height rise. If we deviate much from that, it can start make, makes, making stairs feel awkward. People can trip and whatnot. Most municipalities will allow a minimum of four inches on a rise to a maximum of eight inches. But like I say, if, if the conditions allow, we like to stay as close as we can to seven. So in this example here, to figure out how many stairs we need to get up 109 and 3 quarters inches, we're going to divide that 109 and 3 quarters by 7 inches. And we're just going to use a standard calculator. There's nothing fancy about this math. It's real simple stuff. Any calculator will work. 109.75 divided by 7 equals 15 point Six eight stairs. Now, obviously, we can't have 0.68 of a stair, so we're we're in the neighborhood of 15 or 16 stairs is what we're going to need. So, if we divide that number by 15 stairs, 109.75 divided by 15, we get a 7.32 inch rise for our stair. Uh, let's try 16. 109.75 divided by 16 is a 6.86 inches. Now we can't have 0.86 of an inch on our calculator, so how do we convert that 0.86 to something we can use when we're using our tape measure? That's actually a simple thing to figure out. We're going to take uh, 0 .86, 0 0.86 times 16 for 16 is 13.76. We're going to round up to 14 16 which is 7 eighths. So our rise in this hypothetical situation is going to be 6 and 7 eighths inch over a 10 inch run. Okay, now let's apply this to the actual situation that we're going to be building for in part two of the series. In that situation, we have 139 inches, 139 and 7 eighths inches. Uh, to get 7 eighths into a decimal is simple again. We divide 7 by 8 is 0.875. We add that to our 139. And now we have a number we can work with. 
We're going to divide that by uh, 20. That's going to be very close to our number. Is 6.99 inches per rise. We know that uh, if, we, if I take that 0.99, it's going to come up with uh, 16 sixteenths. Uh, so we don't need to waste the time on the video to come up with that math. We are going to round that to a seven in seven uh, seven inch rise exactly. No sixteenths involved because uh, we're so close to a, a seven inch rise. So in this particular situation, we're going to have a, a seven inch rise, twenty rises. Here's a plan view of the area in the house where we're going to be building. Uh, this is the lower floor down here. Up here at the top of the stairs is the upper floor. We're going to be going up our stairs in this direction. This particular plan calls for a landing on each corner. Five rises going up onto the landing being the sixth rise, three more stairs up onto another landing which is our tenth rise and the last ten rises taking us up to our upper landing. So as we're, there's a lot of nuances to calculating stairs when you're making a full staircase like this as far as how to calculate what your landing heights are. There's no mystery to that. Uh, this landing here is your sixth rise, so you would take uh, six times seven equals 42 inches. So this landing would be built at 42 inches off the deck. This here is uh, our tenth rise. Again, simple math. Seven times ten equals 70 inches. This landing is off the deck. Uh, 70 inches here. And then we build our last set of stringers that would go from that landing up to our upper deck. So we're going to be focusing on this set of stairs right here going up onto our first landing. So you can see here uh, we have about 53 inches from the landing to the corner of the, the wall here going out into the hallway. We don't want our stairs to stick out past that. Um, the plans are calling for five rises there. Five rises times 50 or five times 10 inches equals 50 inches. That keeps us back off of the corner, so we know we're good. So we're going to have a set of risers that has five rises. The sixth rise being up onto the landing. Here's what that scenario is going to look like in a, a section view, which is when we cut it in half and look at it from the side. So we're going to be building this particular. Uh, riser here, stringer here, excuse me, going up onto the landing. This is the landing. This would be the, uh, the wall of the house there on the back of the staircase. So we're going to have five rises. When we go in to start calculating or start laying out our stringer, um, I'll, I'll teach you all the nuances here. In this particular situation, we're going to put a ledger on the back of the stringer so we have something to nail to. And we're going to cut in a little block down here at the bottom that we can use to nail to the floor. That, that block will run all the way across the width, so it allows us a lot of nailing there. That's going to lock the bottom of the stringer in here. The ledger will lock it in up at the top. We'll have a nice, sturdy uh, set of stringers going onto the upper landing. Each one of these risers, as we, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is going to be 7 inches. Each run is going to be 10. And that's all the information we need to be able to to lay out and build this stringer. In part two, we're going to take this information and put it to work in the field. Appreciate all the, uh, all the comments and the ratings from everyone. Uh, keep them up and we'll keep bringing you videos to keep showing you how to, to get stuff done in the field. Thanks a bunch.